Hi, I'm glad you're here. Today is June 1st, and this is going to be my recap of Whitmania. I, I had no idea I could accomplish as much as I did in the month of May. It was just an amazingly good month. So I have a finish, and then I ended up touching every single piece I have. So this is a true whip parade. Unexpected. I had, like I said, no idea I could do that much in one month. So let's get started because this might be pretty long for me. So we're going to start with my first piece, which was, well, let me recap. If you didn't follow along last month, my mania was going to be to finish a haid, get significant progress. I have a certain percentage I reach every month on another haid, and then to touch whatever days remained, each of my projects, pick one and work it for a day and then move on. I don't like to switch every day. It's not in my nature. So that was a real challenge for me. What I didn't realize is how soon I would get my two main goals finished to be able to work on all those pieces. So now that you know what I plan to do for me, let's start with what I did do. So first up was to finish a hate. This is Daisy Blue. It is um, charted, it was, the artist is Joe Lynch. And let's see if I can, yeah, right. I planned this out. Let's see, can you see that? Let me back up a little bit. There we go. So this is a frame that I had, and you can see it's a perfect fit side by side, but from top to bottom, it didn't quite fit. There's a little extra fabric there, and that's okay. So let me bring this in. There was a lot of confetti, but there was also a lot of white. That white was all just block stitching. So this was fun. This I had started as my new year, new start. Um, and then I realized that didn't work for me. So I just picked this up and worked on it whenever I was tired of winter <laughs> because it's the perfect summery piece to anticipate warmer weather. So that's that. Let's see here. Normally when I have a lot of white, I dye the fabric, but when I looked at this design, and let me pull it back so you can see the whole thing, I knew there was some white, but I saw all those blues and purples and, and everything else. So I had no idea there was as much white as there was when I started it. So I didn't dye the fabric and that's okay. I wanted this to, this is an 11 by 17 frame and I didn't want this to be too small. So I stitched this on 14 count and it was just a white Zweigart. So there we go, that's my finish. I'm so excited. It is so beautiful. So let me put this down before I break it. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, now, as I said, I had touched everything that I had. The very last day, so yesterday, I realized that I had four non-full coverage pieces that I hadn't touched. And I just, that was just sad. <laughs> so I decided to give them each an hour and that way I could have, that way I could say I touched everything. So the first one is this little Jim Shore Aqua Chick. Is that gonna focus? Okay, so I'm working on the front. So the front piece there, this is a two-sided piece. I'm not doing this on the perforated paper. My plan is to stitch this together with a little bit of batting so it does feel more like an egg. So here's where it is now and I'll show you where it was. And you can see I've added more of those off-white tannish diamonds in the center, and then I came down here and I started on the pink. So that's where that got to. So that was Jim Shore's Aqua Egg, Aqua, Aqua Chick. Yes, Aqua Chick. The number is JS18-1714, if you want to pick that up. Okay, the other one that got just an hour is Amaryllis by Donna Cooler. And I'm working on the bottom two pages, which basically are those leaves in the stem. Okay, so here's what I did. So in an hour, I just came over here and worked on this section. Let me fold this so I can. 
Okay, so I just worked on these right here. So I'll put in where it was. This I'm working on Serene by Picture This Plus, and it's an 18 count. And speaking of Picture This Plus, I had actually, I was watching um, Ellie Welly Stitcher Lane, and she had mentioned that she had a piece that had a stain on it, but that it was purchased, the fabric was by Picture This Plus. And she said she didn't know what she was going to do because she couldn't watch it, wash it, it was a hand wash it. It was a hand dye. And the reason I use so much Picture This Plus, if I'm not going to dye it myself, is because Picture This Plus is color fast. So if you were worried about um, using a hand dye because you might want to have to clean it or it might get a stain, you can use Picture This Plus. And I've, I clean plenty of mine. Okay, so the next one, this is Paula Vaughn. This is the October quilt. This is from um, a quilt, Quilts for All Seasons. And I stitched a bunch of these years and years ago. And then I passed them on and I decided that I missed them and I wanted them, but I wanted to give them a twist. Um, when I first stitched these, this was back in the, the 90s. As a matter of fact, let me see if I can move. This right here behind me is a Paula Vaughn. Um, my very second piece now my first piece was a little fingertip towel and i picked up a red skein it was on clearance i needed a gift and a little story behind this i needed a gift and so i picked up this fingertip towel that was on clearance for it was like 40 50 cents picked up a skein of floss in in one of the reds i want to say it was like 814 and that was like 20 cents and I came home and I, I sketched out little hearts and I, that was the very first thing I did. The very next piece I did, I thought, that's kind of fun. I want to do this some more. I went back to the store and I found a Paula Vaughn I liked. <laughs> now, the only thing I knew at the time, which I still stitch on Ada, but the only thing I knew at the time was Ada. And so my second piece was the Paula Vaughn with all the back stitching, all the fractionals. Yeah, I jumped in head first. Okay, so here's where... The October quilt is. I had some brown, some 433 on my needle, so I came down and did that. I filled in the, bas the bowl that the apples sit in, and I filled in that chair, that stair riser. So I'll show you where it was. Okay, so I'm in no hurry to finish that one. It's just fun to work on. So my next one is by Kathy Barrick, and this is Fiona and Edward. I always want to change that around and say Edward and Fiona, just alphabetically. So I'm changing all those colors. Um, I, I'll show you what I'm changing them to here. So that's what it will look like. And all I worked on was starting this fence and the roof on the house. So here's the entire piece. And yeah, you can see. Okay, so I didn't do anything more on that horse. The horse I'm stitching in Dracula by Picture. <laughs> okay, this is on Picture This Plus, the fabric, and it is 14 count dapple. The horse I am stitching in Dracula by Color and Cotton. Let me fold this so I can point out. The white is called for. This blue that you see here was supposed to be 310, but it blended in with the Dracula. So it's 597. And the mane was supposed to be a goldish color. I believe it was 833. This is charted in both NPI, uh, needlepoint silk, and, uh, and then the conversion for DMC. So I'm using the conversion from DMC and I am then changing it Accordingly. So this was supposed to be in the DMC 833 and I just didn't feel like that would work so I went ahead and used 310 and then the tail is supposed to be the same color as the body and I'm going to make the tail black because in my world the manes and the tails are basically the same color. Okay so then I came down here and last night I started the I did the fence and I started on the roof and when 
I ran out of thread on my needle up here on the roof. I just quit. This was supposed to be 3021 for both the fence and the, the roof, and I'm using 310. Now, I'm going to do the house, and I'm going to put this here so you can see, in red carnation. This is a cottage garden thread, and you can see the red works pretty well with the red of the horse. How do you guys do this? But it doesn't have the black in it. So I'm going to use that on the house. I haven't decided. This does, it is a variegated color. I don't know if you can pick that up. But it doesn't get as dark as Dracula, and it goes a little bit lighter. So I'm either going to just stitch the whole house in this, or I'm going to make it look like brick and pick another red that will complement it to make it look like red brick. The windows are supposed to be white, and I just haven't decided if that's going to work on my design. I do have the white in the horse, but I'll decide that when I get there. So that is Fiona and Edward. Okay, now we get to the pieces that I actually spent a full day on. This is Silver Landscape. And this is by Caritas Samplings. I restarted this because I just didn't like my fabric. So the last time you saw it, I worked on this tree, but I didn't work on, uh, I didn't finish what was on the second page because right down here is the dividing line between the two pages. So this time, whoops, it's really easy to see what I did because, let's see, so I did the cloud and everything you see on this tree was done last time I picked it up. So then, I'm having a heck of a time showing this. All I did was come down here and work on the ground so I know this is where the first tree goes, this is where the next tree goes. So I'm just laying the foundation for, for filling in the trees. Again, this, um, I don't remember what this is originally charted in, but I'm using the DMC conversion. Okay, the next one is Soda Stitches Four Seasons. This is a giant piece. This is very close to a thinnet or to a full coverage, but it's not quite. So let me see here, like right into here, these empty stitches are not stitched at all. So, but it is mostly full coverage. So that's what I have so far. And all I did is I worked on filling in this house, this building and putting in some of the roof line. So there you can see the comparison of the two. And this is absolutely beautiful. And it's so different from the soda stitch. Other so because most of the soda stitch pieces are they're cutesy. They're there's something I would picture in a child's room or a nursery or for me. Um, and this one is just so gorgeous. And so there it is close up. Oh, that's a better. Let me put the side by side in of what I did on that building here. There you go. So so this one I, I absolutely love. Okay. So my next one was Pastel Reflections. This is a, an old Barbara and Cheryl design. Let me see how I can get this without the glare. Okay, so I'm working on this blue house right here. And I didn't do a whole lot. I worked on this on Memorial Day, so I didn't have as much time as I would have liked. But here's where it is. And so I did this, yeah, this here tannish piece going between the siding. I worked that all the way down and then there was a line here of that color for the window sill and then I just started filling in the top of this door. And here's where it was before. So there's that. Now we get into the full coverage. Now as you notice I'm not really showing you these in order. And that's because when I realized I had a full cover or I had a, a whip parade here, I decided the best bet for me was to do this by size. So I broke this into categories based on size and it will help me 
and I'll explain later, but it'll help me decide what to pick up when I need to pick up some, when I want to pick up something new. So the first one, this is going to fall in, actually, you know what, this falls in that too. So under 30,000 stitches, pastel reflections, the total on this is around 16,000. So, and you can see I've already got a chunk done, so it's not that much. The next one is Lauren Harris. And I'm just guessing on these based on the total stitch count because they're not in Pattern Keeper. These are my two um, paper charts that I have not con converted in any way. Okay, so that's what that will look like. And this one to make it really easy for you, I went right here is the second page. And so let me move back and show you the whole thing. So there's the whole thing. And for May, I just came over here and started filling in page two. So you can see this is where it divides. And so everything to this side is new. So you can see there's, um, I finished gridding the bottom so you can see where the bottom is. So there's not a lot to do on that side. And this worked up really quickly. There's not a lot of confetti. There's a lot of block stitching on this. So this here shouldn't take too much longer. I would say if I have a week and a half or two weeks, I'd be able to finish that. Okay, my next category are things between 50,000 and 100,000 stitches. So this first one is A Promise of Tomorrow, and I have finished 7.10%. And there it is. Now, this is on a 20 count even weave. I'm not telling you fabric sizes. Okay, let's back up. All right, so pastel reflections. This is on 18 count easy count. Uh, just a piece that I had bought a long time ago to try. Warren Harris is because it was small and I wanted this to make a statement. This is on 14 count white Zweigart. And if I don't say the fabrics, they're all Zweigart unless I mention otherwise. Okay, so this is a Zweigart too. This is a 20 count even weave. And I'm trying this two over one tent. This, this year I've got two pieces and I'm trying 10 stitch. And I'm not, I'm not super impressed with it. I think for this design, it will be okay. So what I did, this is by Geek Threads. And originally, my chart did not work in Pattern Keeper. And thanks to Hannah, Hannah Dowling, I was trying to remember her channel name. Um, she informed me that hers did work in Pattern Keeper. So I reached out to Geek Threads and I asked them if maybe now that they their charts are listed as something that works in Pattern Keeper, if they had changed their, their software or something because mine didn't work. And I spoke to Barbara, and she simply, she asked me to try to reload it, which I did. I sent her a screenshot of the error message that I received, and I told her why it didn't work. And the very next email I got from her included a new chart, <clears throat> which works in Pattern Keeper. So what I've done is I've just come over here and picked a color, and if it was, and then just kind of checked to see if it was done marked it off on Pattern Keeper, and continued with it over here. So I've just started putting in the second page a little bit, and little by little I'll finish it. So I don't know the exact percentage, but as close as I can come, this is 7%. And here's where it was before. This is pretty. I love the colors in that. Okay, my next one, and this is... Okay, so on Promise of Tomorrow, I have notes here, I still have 48,762 stitches. For You Can Leave Your Hat On, which is my next one, I'm at 18.52%, and I still have just over 49,000 stitches. The artist is Sandra Santara, and this is charted by Heaven Earth Designs. Let me move back so I can put in where it was before. So... I came over here 
and I just stitched across to get to the end. So this right here is the end of the design. So this is a mini, I always forget to say this, this is a mini and it's not gonna be very big. So, but only having one day, I didn't wanna get into that confetti. So I thought the easiest thing to do would be to count over and, and put in to get to the, the other side there. Okay, my next one is move on. So move on, I have completed 12.63% and I still have just over 55,000 stitches. Now this is by Z Anna Cross Stitch. I did it again. So you can leave your hat on, it's on an 18 count waist wide guard. This is on an 18 count as well. Let me fold this up better. And so you can see there. Now this is where working one a day really threw me for, for one day at a time on a project. So what I did is I came over here and I gritted out further and I gritted down and I started stitching and moving my way, moving my way across. And my plan was I was going to fill in all this, make sure I had all of Mushu's face done and then start the next page. And I started stitching and realized there is no way that I'm going to get all that done in one day. So I was actually planning on working about four days, I guess. I don't know. Now Mushu has a lot of confetti, but this background is so easy to fill in. So, um, I think, yeah, I did get, I got Mushu's face done. So let me bring this in so you can see Mushu's face. And this also works in Pattern Keeper. I purchased this, I think I said from Z Anna Cross Stitch on Etsy. Okay, my next one is Mini Bitter Half, and I've only completed 6.76%, and I still have 68,000 stitches. So this is Mini Bitter Half, and here's where it was before. This one I am stitching on a 20 count Ada. And I, this is my other 10 stitch piece, but because of how dark those colors were, I decided to go with four over one tent. So I didn't like necessarily the coverage of two over one on uh, A Promise of Tomorrow, but because that's an even weave, the fabric is very easy to distort. So with this one, I decided because I like the loop start, I would just double it and go for four. And the coverage is fantastic, but I can't work on it for a very long time. I, I've got arthritis in my fingers and trying to force those four threads in becomes difficult, but the effect is gorgeous. Okay, so the next one is by Unconventional X-Stitch. This is Rainbow Feather Unicorn, and the artist is Magdalena Orlaska, I believe. And I have 3.31%, and I still have 85,000 stitches. So here it is. And if I pull it back, I think you can see, I think you can see it both ways. You see the unicorn's horn is coming in. And here's where it was before. Now this fabric, this is a Zweigart, and it's just an 18 count that I lightly dipped in teal because I was thinking there'd be a lot of white with the unicorn and instead it's mostly grays. But it's kind of fun working on this teal fabric and as opposed to always working on white. Okay, so my last one in my 50 to 100,000 stitches is Mini Dia de Mortos and here is where that is. So this one, I have 17.05% and I still have 75,000 stitches. I originally thought I could finish this this year and that's not gonna happen. This fabric is, the color is rain and this is French, country French by Zweigart. And 
I, I love this color. It's kind of a blue-gray, and it is perfect for, um, now this is a 16 count, so with all the black, and then you can see I've got a lot of white coming in there, it's the perfect color so that um, any fabric that isn't perfectly covered by the thread, by the floss, is not going to be as stark. It also allows me to see that white really pop as opposed to being on, on a different color. Okay, so the next one. Oh, let me, before we move on to the next one, let me just briefly go through what I, why I broke this down. In January, I had two pieces which had just under 5,000 stitches. They're done. I don't have anything under 5,000. Between 5,000 and 30,000, I had seven. I now have two, which is both those paper charts, the Pastel Reflections and Warren Harris. Between 50,000 and 100,000 stitches, I had nine. I'm now down to seven. Of those seven, when I pick up, when I, when I, hmm, I will go for the ones with the least percentage. So that would be, I would start with Rainbow Feather Unicorn and then Bitter Half, followed by Promise of Tomorrow, because the rest are 12%, 17%, and 18%, and those all have less than 10. So now we move on to what is between 100,000 and 200,000. So this first one, I had to figure out which direction it went. This is One for Sorrow. I'm not telling you all of the artist names. Um, okay, I always put everything down in the description box. So if there's an artist that you want to know who it is, just look down there. This is by Stephanie Pui Moon Wa and charted by Heaven Earth Designs. And this is one I should have dyed, a fabric I should have dyed. Um, this is on 20 count Ada, no, even weave, 20 count even weave. And I'm just filling in that top section, that first page. And you can see it's starting to get darker as you go. It starts off really, really light and then gets darker. So here's where it was. And this is the one besides pastel reflections that got the least amount. It was just a day I didn't have a lot of time to stitch. Now this project that I'm going to show you is this originally was in my largest category, which is over 200,000, but I've now completed so many that I now only have 140,000 stitches moving it down to this. Okay, so when you, I have not worked over here on, Al, on Snow White, or I have not worked on Alice. I have worked on Snow White. And there she is. And there's the bottom. So I'm going to put in a picture of where this was. So you see, I finished her face. I finished the deer, the face of the deer. And I finished all those little stitches around her hair that weren't done. And then I came down and put her bodice in. And I've even got a few stitches on her arm, her right arm. I brought her hair down some. So this is absolutely gorgeous. And my granddaughter, my youngest one has seen it. The oldest one has not. Okay, so let's see here. So you can see her face. The artist on this is Jasmine Becca Griffith. And I just love how she does faces. Let me peek around here. So you can see the deer. So this is... This is just absolutely gorgeous. And this is so much fun to work on. There's a little bit of confetti, but there's a lot of, I wouldn't say block stitching. Um, what do I want to say? The black in her hair is pretty solid, but you don't, I don't really know how to explain it. I mean, you can, all right, you can fill your needle with floss and just go off and just follow it through, but you're not actually stitching, you know, block after block of just solid color. The eyes on 
Snow White. Oh, yeah, on Snow White. And the face of the deer were where most of the confetti was. But the effect is gorgeous. Okay, this is my focus piece for the year. So you'll see that again shortly. Okay, so the next one is that's all I have for 100,000 to 200,000. So I had two in that category at the beginning of the year, and I still have two. Um, Dia de Mortos, no, it wasn't. I'm not sure which one was in that category before, but I had two and I still have two. My last category is 200,000 to 300,000. My largest piece is like 276,000. So my first one is John Lennon. And here's where I got you on that. So I pretty much just came down here and started filling in all this. So I'll show you where that was before. Okay. So this one, the colors look amazing when you're looking at it here on the camera, but to stitch this, you have pinks and you have purples and you have oranges and and it just feels so weird to stitch it. Let me see if I can bring it in real close so you can pick up all those colors. Yeah, you can see those colors now. And so that feels weird to stitch. I'm looking forward to getting out of that section. This is on 18 count white fabric. Again, this is Weigart. You can always tell because Weigart has this red stripe. So this one, I now have 30, no, Alice and Snow White, I'm at 33%. That is the most, because, so you can see when something is a focus piece, you can really get a lot done. John Lennon is only 3.31%. And there was a total of 243,000 430 stitches, and I've done roughly 10,000. Okay, my next one is an unconventional X stitch design. This is Masquerade, and this I chose from a gift certificate I received from Kaylee, my friend on Instagram. I'll put her Instagram account here. And if you haven't looked, she has a wonderful shop. Go check her out. She's got designs that she's created and bags, very unique style bags and uh, fabrics. She sells floss, she's in Canada, so her floss is is pricier than what we can get here in the States. But her fabric, and try, it's gorgeous, you need to check it out. So here's her shop. This is, well, this surprisingly, and I didn't even think about it, is my second unicorn piece. Um, and I didn't pick it because it was a unicorn. I picked it because overall I just loved it. Right here starts the horn of the unicorn. This is by Christopher Lovell, and there's a hashtag for this. So anything, if you are stitching any of his pieces, the hashtag on Instagram is Lovell Lovell, and I'll put right here so you can see that. So what I did this time is I didn't really touch the first page, which is here. I came over to do the second page. So there's still a couple stitches missing. I picked one color, which is 3371. And there were a couple of those stitches here. And then all of this on the second page is 3371. So this is gorgeous. This is just, I can't wait to start seeing all the details come in on that one. Okay, that one is at 2.29%. Now this is Grackles. This one, I have 266,000 stitches left, and it only has, two, it has 270, so you can tell I haven't done much. I'm at 1.63%, and that's where I am. So I'd, I thought about counting over and starting on that bird, that first bird. I can't wait to get to it, but when I looked at how much confetti was in it, I, I just couldn't. I couldn't find a spot where I could get a lot of stitching in and have it really show up in one day. So I thought, no, I'll just keep going and that'll be a treat when I get to the bird. But for now, I would just work on that. 
Okay. And finally, my last piece is Peacock Daisy. And I'm at 1.52%. And here's where that is. So I just filled in down here everything on those first four columns, came over here and put some in here, and I followed when I had thread on my needle, I went ahead and filled it in on the next column. So that's where that is. Now this is a sal that I started with um, Elisa, I did it right this time, from eCrafting in Colorado, and Andrea C. I Heart Cross Stitch is going to join in. If you would like to join in, the hashtag on Instagram is Peacock Daisy Sal. Now, we will get to that some more here the, shortly. So I went and put something over here that didn't belong over here. And I'm never going to find it. Okay. Oh, I didn't. All right. So now in that category of 200,000 or 300,000, I had four pieces at the beginning of the year. And even though Alice and Snow White has moved up to the small, next smallest category, I added Masquerade in. The one that has the least amount is Peacock Daisy, followed by Grackles. So when I want to pick up something big, I need to start with those and get them caught up to, um, to the other pieces in that category. So in January, I started with 15 full coverage pieces. Today I have 14, and yes, I finished a lot, but I keep starting them. And I had seven non-full coverage, and I have another start this month, so that will bring me up to eight. Okay, so before we get into plans, let me talk first about the channel name. So you may have noticed that I have a new channel name. There is kind of a reason. When I picked my channel name, I, I wasn't living here. I was living in an apartment which had the owners of the apartment complex also owned this like acre and a half of land behind the building. And we were allowed to go up and do whatever we wanted up there. So we cleaned it all up. And when I say we, I'm talking some of the other neighbors in the apartment building. We cleaned it up. We started a community garden. There was a tree line that separated the apartments and the parking area from this field. And that's what we referred it to because it was just this big open field. My grandchildren would come visit and they'd go, can we go in the field? That's what any, anybody and everybody called it. So when I picked a name, I picked the stitching field because I had set up an area with a little table and chair where I would go off and if I wanted to read or I wanted to stitch and I would do that there. So it was my stitching field. I've since moved and I didn't know you could change your channel name. So when I did finally tell myself that it was time to start this channel that I had been thinking about, I just used that name. Where I live now, I have a nice big piece of property. I have what they call a triple lot, meaning there were supposed to be three houses on this piece of land, but in the past, whoever they bought up the land. And so I have my lot, and then I have two more lots, which those two lots are um, what we call my yard. So I don't have a field here. And so you probably wondered where I came up with that name. There are amazing names people have chosen for their floss tubes, for their channels. And okay, I'm back. My camera told me I needed to save my video. So I don't know what happened there. I've never had that happen. So I'm going to have to piece these together. Okay, so I had a really hard time coming up with a good name. Every time I found a name, there was something similar. And so I went with the Keystone Stitcher because I live in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's Keystone State. And there was nobody that had that. I've moved around a lot in my life, but one thing I know for sure is that I've always come back to Pennsylvania and I'm not going anywhere anymore. So. I've got my family here, my friends here. My life is here in Pennsylvania. So I'm now the Keystone Stitcher. I hope that didn't confuse you too much. So now let's get back into plans. 
because I've got interesting plans. So one of the things that I'm going to do, well, all right, how shall I start this? In working on one project per day, my mind had plenty of time to wander as I was becoming frustrated with not being able to work for longer periods of time. And at the same time, I was watching Floss Tube and to take my mind off the fact that I wanted to keep on these projects. One of the Floss Tubers I was watching was Alma from Almost Little Wonders. And she talked about five categories that her and some friends, they pick five categories. And then in those five categories, they pick one project for each one and work on it that month. And I played around with that. I looked at, at what I do each month and thought, that's not much different than what I'm doing. And I don't, I don't think that would work for me. So I thought, okay, what else? And then I realized that, okay, there were a couple things I wanted to do. So the first one is, <laughs> I gotta hold this up again, Alice and Snow White. So Alice and Snow White, this I want done by a certain time. So I need to complete 6% every month on her. So she's going to get 6% in the month of June. And I'm going to work on Snow White. I think if I put Alice's face in and start working down, that I might be disappointed that I don't have that to look forward to. So I'm going to work all of Snow White and then come over and work all of Alice. And I think that will be fun. The really fun thing about this is that you have so many different focal pieces. Most of my pieces have one big subject matter. And this, you've got the two girls, then you've got three different animals. In addition, you've got the apples that Alice Snow White is holding. You have the mushrooms that Alice is holding. So there's just so much going on that makes that fun. Okay, so the next thing that I decided I wanted to do is Peacock Daisy. So this is my Sal. And it's the only Sal that I have. And so I decided that I'm way behind. Um, Elisa is ahead of me, which makes me feel really guilty that I agreed to do this as a sow and I'm behind. So I'm going to work on this one day a month, but since I don't like working on something one day a month, I'm going to work on this the last day of one month and the first day of the next month so that I'm working on it two days in a row. So for example, I worked on it yesterday, so that's my one day for May, and I'm going to work on it today, one day for June. Then in July, I'll work on it at the end of last day of July and the first day of August and so on. And that way I don't get frustrated thinking I'm just going to be pulling this out for one day. Now, because I finished uh, Daisy Blue, I, which was my secondary focal piece and it gets a fraction of the time each month that Alice and Snow White gets, I'm going to replace that with Dia de Mortos. So this is a gift, which is, you know, my gifts are usually my focus pieces. So I want to see some major progress on this one. So that will get done. Now, the next thing is that one thing I did take and, and got an idea from Alma was that I would like to work on either a piece that is close to finishing or a piece that is way behind in its category. So, for example, I'm not going to say that I need to have the same percentage done on Peacock Daisy, which has 275,000 stitches, as I do on something that only has 30,000. That's unrealistic. So, for this month, I have chosen Born Harris because this is one of my oldest. And it really should get done. So, that one I'm going to work on. And then I have a new start. So the new start is this. This is Harry Potter Characters by Daily Magic Stitch on Etsy. And you can buy these characters individually. But when my granddaughter saw them, she had asked for a Harry Potter piece. And she had narrowed it down to a Dobie piece, Dobby, Dobie, or these characters. And when she saw these, she decided she wanted these. And I told her... You know, I could just pick up, because they are sold individually, we could just buy and, and stitch just the ones she wanted. 
and she decided she wanted all five. She was excited because Luna was in it because Luna is not one you normally see. So I dyed a piece of fabric. Now this is just purple, liquid red. And I learned this technique from Debbie from Creatively Yours. I take a glass jar, I use mason jars because I have a lot of them, and I just bunch it up and shove it in. And because this wasn't a very big piece, I used a small jar. I used a, a pint jar so that I could really, really shove it in there. And then I, I pre-mix my dye, and I always use the liquid. And then I just pour it over it, cap it, make sure it fills it all the way to the top, and let it sit for a half hour to an hour to get this effect. And then I just take it out, oops, that I just, color just totally died, washed out. And that's, so I think, now she's done the test, and I think she's a Ravencloth. So this really isn't the right color, but her wall in her room is pink, and her mom is has been trying to make sure that all her frames of any artwork or anything in her room is pink. So I needed a color, I didn't want to stitch this on white, I needed a color that would go with her walls, but but yet offset. And I thought this would be a nice compliment. So I will start that. And moving forward, now like I said, I want to work on Peacock Daisy, one day a month, Alice in Snow White, Dia de Mortos, and then what days left, I will fill in with whatever. So in July, July is an interesting month. I will have limited stitching time. So July I went through and I've already planned this because I know what July is going to be. And I just pick pieces that don't have confetti, that will be very easy, and I'm just going to pick pieces that can be finished. So in July I will finish off several pieces, hopefully, and then come August what I will be working on is each of those categories of getting more progress on each of those pieces. So because this is basically my half year, I thought I would show you my whips. So this is where I keep everything. This is just a journal I picked up at the dollar store. It was a graduation piece for, and they clearanced it out for 50 cents. Okay, you can see some of these are boxed off in orange. Those are pieces I want to finish this year. You can see the ones that are colored in in orange. Those are the ones that are already done this year. And then the ones that are boxed off in purple are ones I plan to do next year. Now, this one down here is a start for, yeah, this one, for October. It's a Halloween start. So that one, and it should, it's quick. It'll be a start and a finish. And so here's Harry Potter. Now, Mulan is in here. I don't know if I'll get Mulan finished. Um, pastel Reflections, I would like to finish that because it's small. I have my grandson's ornament. I picked Silver Landscape, the carriage house sampling with trees. Uh, I picked that to finish. And then I didn't have it. I had it just blocked off. I had to Warren Harris. And I had that marked for this year. And then I decided I wanted to finish Mulan. But now that my granddaughter wants Harry Potter, Mulan was for her. So I don't have to work on Mulan and have that finished if I'm finishing Harry Potter, which is, she loves both, but she wants Harry Potter done first. So you can see right now I have my grandson's ornament. I have two non-full coverage pieces, well, three when I get to the one in October. And I have two full coverage pieces that I still want to finish this year. So that would give me two, three, four, five, six, maybe six more to finish, but I've already finished three, four, five, six, seven. I've already finished eight. So that is how my year looks. So that's how I decide what needs to have my focus and what can kind of be pushed off when I'm when I feel that time is limiting me on what I can stitch. So that's my whip parade. That's my mania recap. Um, my plans. That's everything I have for you this month. I have a feeling this is probably the longest one I've ever done. 
If you have any questions, please ask below. I love hearing from you. It makes this more fun to do. I started this for me, but to have the interaction with you is, is makes this all worthwhile. So have a fantastic month and I will see you July 1st. Thanks.